I know what you guys have always been wondering. Which weapon class is actually the strongest? Is it the hunting horn? It's probably the hunting horn. Hunting horn is probably the fastest weapon you've ever heard of, especially because it's definitely not a support weapon. Whatever the case is, we also want to know what the slowest weapon is. We know a little bit about weapon popularity. We know that the hunting horn and the lance tend to be at the bottom of the weapon popularity charts, and at the very top of the weapon charts, is the longsword. The indefeatable longsword is always at the top. So wouldn't it be interesting to know which weapon class, and I'm not talking about a particular weapon in that weapon class, but which weapon class really is dealing the most damage? Well, guess what? There is a way to know. There's a website I've been using for a little while, especially ever since Iceborne came out. And this is a website that compiles speed runs from around the world. I find this really to be a useful tool for information. I think you guys will too. The name of the website is iceborne.psychen.io. Uh, I probably pronounced that wrong. If I did, I apologize. Uh, but you know, now you know how to get to the website and you can go see all the same information I can. So go check that website out, okay? All right, now that we've properly shouted out the website, let's go ahead and take a look at the weapon speedrunning tier list, which is what is really catching my attention here. What is the difference between a weapon speedrunning tier list and a weapon class tier list? In my opinion, there is no difference. That's because speedrunners, they build uh, for that weapon as best as possible. They figure out what the strongest weapon in that weapon class is, and then they use it better pretty much than anyone else. So when you compile or the averages of their speedrun times, Really what you're doing is you're taking a look at what those weapons are truly capable of. Now there's a note, uh, I have the same thoughts as the uh, person who's running the website does. He says, note that this is not a super accurate list. He says, for example, some weapons have more speedrunners, and this can push times to be even lower for that particular weapon class. The list of quests used is based entirely on popularity. Okay, that's a good note. He says, it's a fun experiment. The list is automatically updated when new runs are added. Okay, so all of that's really important information, right? So we get an impression of how this list is being compiled. Apparently it updates on its own. Uh, and he says, you know, if a certain weapon is more popular than the other weapons, it, of course, because there's so much competition for that weapon, maybe that's driving down the times. However, all of that speculation, we don't actually know what the case is for that. It, it's, it's not perfect. We all understand this. It's always been that way. But you know what I like about speedrunners is rather than saying, in theory, we should be doing the most damage here, they actually go out and produce results. So I've always had a ton of respect for the speedrunning community in Monster Hunter World. Now the list. Look at the top, rank number one, the Heavy Bowgun. Oh my lord. Uh, it says that the average rank for this weapon is 1.9. Seven. So I'm guessing it would be great to know. Maybe the creator would come over and kind of explain it. I'd love it if he did that. I'd pin that comment. Maybe he can explain how the average rank is working and the average score is working. He doesn't quite explain what those mean. So I'm guessing for the average rank, he means out of the 30 runs, it's usually in first or second place. Or 1.97 1, 1 would mean that sometimes you're in third place, sometimes you're in first place, but when you add all of them together, it's averaging out to like 1.97. That's really good. All right, so it's, I would say it's got a significant lead, 1.97, followed by the bow in second place. Why do we see the heavy bow gun and the bow in the top two positions for speedrun times? It's really straightforward. It's something we already knew about them. It's the spread shot. The bow has a move called power shot, and the heavy bow gun has something called spread ammo excuse me, spread ammo three, right? And they're, they're essentially the same thing, although bow works a bit differently. Heavy bow gun is raw damage, bow is going to be a combination of raw and elemental, right? But it's the, the power shot on the bow and the heavy bow guns spread shot ammo three. Uh, it's really, really powerful, very high damage stuff. Uh, and if you get good at using these two weapons, guess what? Your your average speed run times are going to be much slow, uh, faster, not slower, faster. And this means you're gonna come in second place and first place on the tier list, really straight forward. So it's one of my favorite weapons, Heavy Bowgun. Another nice thing I've always liked about Heavy Bowguns, of course, is also the Cluster Bomb ammo still is actually viable in Iceborne, and the Sticky ammo is very easy to use. So I happen to like the fastest speed running weapon in the game. That's very cool. Also, I do love the bow. I just don't use it so much because I have the Heavy Bowgun that I'm already kind of skilled at. Okay, so that's one and two. Third place is the Dual Blades, the Jewel Blades. So Dual Blades in third place, that's very interesting. I did not expect that actually, but Dual Blades is in third place with an average rank of 4.60. I don't really know what the average score means, it says 10.40. Those can't be speedrun times because 
uh, the heavy bowgun has the highest uh, number here. You would expect it to have the lowest number, so I don't exactly know what that means. Uh, but yeah, so dual blades coming in third place, followed by the greatsword. Huh. I would have expected the greatsword to maybe be higher than the dual blades, but apparently dual bl er, the greatsword is in fourth place. And then after that, we see the light bowgun, and you can kind of see the average rank uh, between dual blades, greatsword, and light bowgun is actually fairly close between the two, right? So starting out at the heavy bowgun in first place, there's actually a big jump when you go to the bow, and then another big jump when you go to dual blades. But dual blades is very close to greatsword, and then greatsword to light bowgun isn't actually a, a very large jump either. But the next large jump is had in sixth place with the charge blade. So the charge blade jumps up to 7.33 average rank. Okay, so charge blades, uh, they're doing fairly well. They're basically in the middle of the list here is probably where you would want to be is at least in the middle, especially if you're in the upper half of the middle, which charge blade is in this case. So is the insect glaive in seventh place. Okay, so insect glaive is a weapon I haven't really touched quite as much in Iceborne. Maybe I'll do an analysis of how speedrunners are using this weapon, the, the, the optimal attack patterns, and how they're preferring to use it. Probably they're doing raw damage, because raw damage in Iceborne is still really strong. In eighth place, this is really surprising. Well, it's not surprising, but it's, it's cool to see, I, I suppose is what I mean. So in eighth place is the Gunlance. The Gunlance is doing really well, guys. And why is that? Because long-shelling Gunlance does not require you to soften monsters parts it is an explosive damage type and right now long shelling gun lance is really strong it has a lot of range you shoot the uh, worm stake and the worm stakes exploding to give you a lot of bonus damage so we should probably do some more work on the gun lance as well it's interesting that is ranking so high because i i suspect it didn't rank this high in the past i'm i have a feeling iceborne probably has ranked gun lance much higher now now here's something that's really funny. In ninth place, all the way in ninth place on the lower half, or the, you know, the second half of the list, the lower half, we have Longsword. Longsword, the most popular weapon in the game, is not even that high up on the list. Now, to me, that says that the Longsword is fun to use. So you can see when you're working on weapon design, it's not all about power, because if it was, the heavy bowgun would probably dominate the weapon popularity list. But bowguns actually typically arrive about halfway down the list, usually on the lower side of the weapon popularity list. Whereas on the speedrun list, or what I call the weapon class tier list, he's on the top, and longsword is all the way in ninth place. So people like the longsword because it's just more satisfying to play, probably. Right under longsword is actually the switch axe. Uh, you know, I think the switch axe would do a little bit better if it was I feel like it's very tricky to use the switch axe. It does really high damage when the monster is knocked over. You just do crazy damage. But when you're having to dodge a very fast monster, uh, especially one you can't really commit to very easily, I feel like switch axe starts to struggle at that point. So uh, another thing that's interesting here, uh, gun lance, longsword, and switch axe really aren't that far off from each other in my opinion. Underneath that, I don't understand this. So we have the hammer in 11th place, but it says that the average rank is 7.54. So I'm wondering if uh, something here is off or if I'm understanding the average rank correctly. Uh, you can see average score on the far right. It, it seems to be shifting downwards. So it seems that understanding average score is important for uh, explaining this list. Once again, I don't really know how he's calculating the average score. He doesn't explain it. Uh, maybe you guys can analyze it and tell me what you think it is. Or again, maybe the creator will just tell us what it is or somebody can contact him. Uh, underneath the hammer, we have the sword and shield. And you know what? I actually expect that to change. I've been hearing rumors that sword and shield is doing damage output similar to the bow ever since they buffed the perfect rush on sword and shield. I've been testing perfect rush myself. I've never really given it that much attention because I felt when Iceborne launched that sword and shield was not that strong. But with the change to its... Uh, uppercut and then a buff to the perfect rush i would not be surprised to see sword and shield climb the list at least somewhat underneath that in 13th place but with a large jump in average rank we have the hunting horn and last place we have the lance what's interesting about that hunting horn actually still beats the lance the lance all the way in last place this somehow is really not surprising me at all. You guys might have been in my very whiny live stream where I did nothing but take a poo on the lance when I play. It's one of my most played weapons and I, I picked it up 
once again after a long break from it and I realized just how little damage it was doing. This is clear evidence that Capcom should consider buffing the lands. The lands should definitely be de dealing more damage than the Hunting Horn because the Hunting Horn as a solo weapon really you don't see it shine as much because Hunting Horn has that attack up extra large buff and when it hands it out to your teammates yes so uh, basically attack up extra large is being multiplied by the number of the teammates that you have. So if it was at the bottom of the average range or average score for damage output this would still be okay in a way because really you would you could think of it as more uh, leaning toward having benefits in multiplayer rather than in solo so this is a it's sort of acceptable in a way although i don't I, got, I gotta admit, I, would, I wouldn't I would be okay with Hunting Horn ranking higher uh, in solo. It, it's the jump. I mean, look at the jump between Sword and Shield, average score is 5.28. When we go down to Hunting Horn and Lance, it's literally like half of that. And Sword and Shield is like third from last anyways. So that's just really bad looking. I would... Uh, uh, do you guys remember? It was a while ago. I was saying... I was playing Hunting Horn against... It was, was it Tempered Teostra and Iceborne? And I was really putting a good effort into soloing Teostra, and it was a struggle. And then I swapped over to the hammer, and it was like, just just like that, I just easily defeat Teostra. Uh, so I was thinking back then, I was like, man, maybe Hunting Horn could still use maybe a little bit more love in terms of damage output or something, because it was a solo. Uh, and this list, in my view, kind of confirms that. And then similarly, the Lance is just very heavily underperforming. I really would like Capcom to give it a buff so that it feels more fun to use. Since I know the weapons a lot more than I used to know, uh, right, I play all the weapons, uh, probably not dual blades and the sword and shield so much, but I play a lot of the other weapons a lot more than I used to. It hurts to come from playing all those other weapons and then to go over to the lands and just be like, wow, now I deal no damage, right? It's, uh, that's an exaggeration. I do deal damage. It's just I can tell it's significantly less damage than like, especially if you compare it to Heavy Bogun, which is my most played weapon. You know, I'm doing spread shot on a Heavy Bogun and then you trade over to the lands. You're just like, what is this? I'm doing like a fifth of the damage. So there you guys go. That's the weapon tier list. From 1 to 14, I'll probably be checking up on this list bi-monthly to give you guys updates on if there's any changes in the rankings of the weapons. Uh, I find it to be very interesting. We're going to be covering this uh, every every other month, I, th I think we're going to cover the weapon tier list. And then on the other side of the month, right, since there is going to be bi-monthly, we're going to be covering weapon popularity. So we'll have one month weapon popularity, one uh, the next month. Uh, the weapon tier list, weapon class uh, tier list. So that's my intention for this, and uh, big shout out to the website. He's done a really nice job with it. I hope he continues to work on it. And that's going to be the end of the show. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.